Today we're having a look at two very budget-friendly external monitors by a company called TimberCod. This is what they look like. They are the DC56 and the DC80. Why am I doing this? I don't really know for sure, and it's extremely hot at the time that I film this, so I actually might go insane. So anyways, we're gonna actually check out both of these monitors. Here's the little guy, and I'm using the big one right now for the filming of this video, as I do a lot of the time. And we're gonna check these things out, rip them apart, and see if they're actually worth considering. Let's get started. Welcome back guys, and yes, today we are checking out the DC56 by TimberCod, as well as the DC80, the 5.5 inch, and the seven inch variety in both of these external monitors. And they are definitely a great budget option. They have great build quality, they have great features, and pretty much everything you need if you're looking for a basic monitor. So let's jump in and have a look at both and figure out whether or not you should be actually considering either of these two. And if you do want a chance to win one of these or a lens or whatever I'm giving away at the time, depending on when you're watching this video, make sure you hit that like and subscribe button and join the community. Anyways, we're diving right in and checking out what's included with these monitors. As you can see, both of them come very well packaged and include a perfect amount of accessories. There's everything you need and nothing you really don't. You've got a convenient adjustable elbow and several mounting options. There's a power adapter for unlimited usage as well as charging as this also has an internal battery. Now inside the tightly packed box, you've got some paperwork, it does have several connection cords depending on your setup including an HDMI micro and mini. There's no lack of mounting hardware either, and as far as the actual monitor is concerned, it feels very well made being a mostly metal construction. Both size monitors have very similar features, but do note that the DC80 is the only one of the two that has an HDMI out. Mounting ports make it easy to add a wireless transmission system, a microphone, or a video light if needed. There's nothing on the back of the monitor, but on the top you'll find all the convenient and easily accessible buttons that you need. I almost forgot about its little travel case. Great to use when you throw it in your bag and not have to worry about scratches. Here's everything that comes in the box. The screen itself looks good, it's bright and vivid, and should be no problem even when working in the daylight. The menu and features are intuitive and easy to navigate, a lot of them I use on a regular basis. You've got focus peaking of course, which is key if you ask me to never miss a shot, and it doesn't stop there. You've got false colors, You've got monochrome capabilities, you can flip your screen horizontal and vertical if need be. Of course you've got your histogram, RGB and vector monitoring, just about everything the aspiring filmmaker needs. When I'm in the studio I do prefer the 7 inch just because I can see what's going on. I like to use focus peaking to set up my shot, and I use it most of the time because of the absence of my flip screen on my Sony a7 III. Both monitors do support a full 4K pass-through, but let's quickly touch on a couple similarities and differences to help you choose which one's gonna be better for you. First, there's the obvious size difference. 5.5 to 7 is actually a pretty big difference. With the bigger one, obviously you're gonna be able to see just a lot more detail and be a little bit more confident in your shot, but it does come at the cost of size and weight, of course. So for the ultimate travel and portability monitor, the 5.5 easily takes it. They're both gonna have the same 3500 milliamp hour battery, but do seem to last about the same in my experience. Remember that the DC80 is the only one with an HDMI out, and other than that, they pretty much have the same features. They do vary in price a little bit, but they are very budget friendly. The DC56 coming in at about 120 US dollars, and add about $30 onto that for the bigger seven inch option. So if you're asking me, completely reasonable and a lot of value here. Both of these monitors' solid metal construction is actually quite surprising to me given the price. There's a confidence to them that I do enjoy, and I'd honestly recommend either one to you. Here's a recap of some of the accessories and the features that these two do include, and if you do have any questions or comments about these two, make sure you drop them down below. If you have a different monitor, let me know which one you went with and why. If you are interested in picking one of these up, I'll leave affiliate links down in the description for you. And thanks so much for watching the video. If you did enjoy it and want to see more just like it, make sure you hit that like and subscribe button and join the community. Anyways, like always, make mistakes, be yourself, and get out there and take some more pictures. Or video. See ya.